IHGN Studios, it's Braves Beat. Hello Braves, and welcome back to this week's episode of Braves Beat. I'm Birch Carter. And I'm Henry Cannon. So Henry, how's Senior Rice hitting you? It's been pretty rough. I agree with that 100%. Well Braves, we have a lot of news to cover, so let's get started. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, a month where we come together to fight against breast cancer. This is the month where we show support to survivors by wearing pink. We can also learn about the importance of being screened for breast cancer. Together, we can make strides towards a cure and improving millions of lives. The junior class is sponsoring a canned food drive from October 31st to November 15th. Here's junior Finn Crosby to give us more information about the food drive. Thanks, guys. I'm here with junior class officer Finn Crosby, who is here to discuss a big upcoming service opportunity for Indian Hill students. Yes, so this November is rapidly approaching and in recognition of the season of giving, Indian Hill is running a thankfulness campaign. What is the thankfulness campaign? Well, as the name suggests, it is a canned food drive or a campaign where students will be encouraged to bring in canned food and other non-perishable items, which will then be given to organizations such as Matthew 25 and Interparish Ministries. Due to the aftermath of two major hurricanes, food pantries like these are in desperate need of supplies and donations, so we're just trying to do our best to help them out. Uh, when does the campaign take place? So the campaign will begin on October 31st and will run for two weeks until November 15th. It is an event that will also contribute to the Great Wars, so the class that makes the most donations will receive a reward that is still yet to be determined, but we're looking at some pretty cool things. Donation bins will be located in the front entry to come out and support the Braves Pillar of Service and help those in need during this time of year. Thanks for sharing this important information with us. Now, back to you guys at the news desk. Cool beans. Thanks, Finn. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> we would like to congratulate our IHHS Coca-Cola semifinalists, Hollis Chan, Jesse Robinson, and Samantha Kane. Out of over 100,000 applicants, 1,500 students, or the top one half percent have been named semifinalists. This election is for their academic excellence, leadership, and community service. From these semifinalists, 150 will be awarded a $20,000 scholarship. Here's Michael with our semifinalists. Hello, Braves. I had the opportunity to interview our Indian Hill High School Coca-Cola semifinalists. I'm here with Jesse Robinson and Samantha Kane. Jesse, in your words, what is the Coca-Cola Scholarship Program all about? Yeah, the Coca-Cola Scholars Foundation is an organization that recognizes high school leaders that are committed to their academics and community service. Samantha, what does this award mean to you? Yeah, to me it means making a positive impact in my community and being committed um, to public service. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be recognized as semifinalists and see how the next round goes. That sounds great. Thank you. Now, I'm here with Hollis Chan, our third semifinalist. Welcome, Hollis. Thank you. What does this recognition mean to you? Definitely means a lot, um, especially since this award is such a privilege because it like establishes the leadership and service that I've been focusing on so much in high school and I've gone on to see people um, become semi-finalists and finalists and scholars all those people that I know um, have achieved a lot of things beyond high school and even college and I hope to continue that trajectory thank you now back to the news desk congrats you three keep up the good work the fall production of Pride and Prejudice was a huge success this past weekend Here's a behind the scenes package produced by Veronica Miller, who was not only a cast member, but also a digital media production student. Roll the clip.
Thanks, Veronica, for sharing this highlight reel. The show was amazing. Congrats to the whole cast and crew. While our fall sports teams have hit the ground running, let's hand it over to our sports reporters, Patrick and Chase, for this week's report. What's up, Braves? I'm Patrick Langworthy. And I'm Chase Rolfe, here with this week's sports report. Fall sports are starting to wrap up, so we're going to cover every sport this week. The Braves football team had a tough battle last Friday against division rival Wyoming, but lost 23-13. They played a night against Taylor at 7 p.m. along with the senior night. The theme is Halloween, so get spooky. Field hockey lost a tough game in the regional semifinals to Ursuline 2-3, marking the end of the season. Great job this season, girls. Boys cross country came in second place at the OHSAA district tournament, with James McGrath coming in fourth and Harry Hong coming in fifth. They advanced to the regional tournament, which is this Saturday. Good luck, Braves. Girls cross country came in third place overall at the OHSAA district tournament with Ella Grant finishing in fourth and Claire Wilkes finishing in 14th. They also advanced to the regional tournament this Saturday. Good luck. Congrats to the girls tennis team on an unbelievable season and becoming state champs, sweeping Mommy Valley Country Day 3-0 and Gilmore Academy 3-0 in the final. Thank you to head coach Wade Ward and coaches Adam Walter and Mike Pergowski for all that you do for our girls and school. Boys soccer won the district semifinal game against LaSalle 5-1 and they advanced to the district final where they will play Tippecanoe this Saturday at Bellbrook High School at 7 p.m. Good luck Braves. Girls soccer had a tough loss in their district semifinal game against McNick 2-1. Good season girls. Girls Volleyball has had an amazing season, but unfortunately, they lost their district quarterfinal game against Mercy McCauley 3-0. That's all the news we have for you this week. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thanks for the awesome update on our fall sports teams. Let's keep cheering them on. Go Braves! Here's Mr. Johnson with his two words of the week. What's up, Braves? Here are your two words for the week. Lightning versus thunder. I bet you're thinking about a storm right now, aren't you? While they are parts of a storm, I want you to also know that they symbolize something deeper for your journey in personal development and leadership. Lightning is quick, it's bright, and it grabs people's attention. It's a spark of inspiration or a burst of energy that makes people look. Thunder, however, comes later. It's not as flashy, but it rumbles with power that you can absolutely feel. As leaders, we must embrace both lightning and thunder. Let your bright ideas and talents be like lightning, sparking inspiration and capturing the attentions of others. But don't forget to bring the rumble of the thunder by committing to personal growth, staying dedicated, and working to make sure that your actions have a lasting impact. True leadership isn't about those lightning moments all the time. It's about the steady strength that follows, showing up for yourself and others, and making a difference long after the flash has faded. Shine bright when the moment calls for but always bring the thunder. Be steady, strong, and unstoppable. That's your two words for the week, Braves. Let's keep pushing, keep growing, and let's make some noise together. Thanks, Mr. Johnson. We have two important dates for this upcoming week. On Tuesday, October 29th, the IHHS and IHMS bands will be hosting a concert at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. And on Wednesday, October 30th, the IHHS and IHMS orchestra will be hosting a concert at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. We hope to see you there. Okay, Braves, that's all the news we have for you this week. Be sure to follow us on X, subscribe to us on YouTube, and email us with any school updates. And remember, stay classy, Indian, Indian Hill. Hill. Maddie, Maddie, what was your uh, your lowest uh, quarter one grade? Um, you can check right now. Okay. I think it was an 89. An 89? Yeah. I don't know, we got Mr. Smart, Mr. Smarty Pants over here. What was the lowest grade you got in the first quarter of this school year? Um. What was the lowest grade that you got during the first quarter? It was a micro. I will not be telling you the grade. That's, that, that, that's the whole point. Tell us the grade. It was on a test, but I'm not telling you the test grade. I'm here with Sophie. Uh, Sophie, what's your spirit animal? A tiger. Why is it a tiger? Because they're feisty. Can you elaborate on that? That's such a simple answer. Um, I'm, I'm feisty. May when it we, comes to sports. May we ask uh, Julius uh, for experience? Do your thing. This is Braves big. You can do anything.
So we're asking people what their spirit animals are, and uh, your girl, Sophie, said that she was a tiger because she was feisty. Can, can you elaborate on that, or can you confirm that? Oh, I think she's a tiger because she's ginger. Is she feisty, though, because she wanted to confirm that report? No, nah, just ginger. Boys, what's your favorite spirit animal? I mean, like, what's your spirit animal? I think a snow leopard is my spirit animal. Could you elaborate on that? Uh, like, it's like a leopard. But it's like white and it has like black and gray spots. It's pretty cool. What about you, Chan? I'd say like a shark. Okay, could you explain that? Like a baby shark. Because like it's fun to like swim in the ocean, like a like a shark. Mm. What about you? Probably like a bald eagle, because I'm pretty patriotic. All right, I'm here with Tazner. Tazner, what's your spirit animal? Probably a monkey. I'm pretty hairy. Is there any other reason why you choose a monkey? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm just monkey-like, you know? Uh, just in, like, you know what I mean? I'm here with Emma. Emma, what's your spirit animal? Um, my spirit animal is this baby sheep on the Khan's farm. Why do you say it's your spirit animal? Because it's just, like, so adorable. Look at it. Would you consider yourself to be adorable? Well, I just think it's very like cute and I just identify with The whole that. point of a spirit animal is that it's supposed to represent you. Do you think that represents you? Are you saying I'm ugly? When did I say that sheep was I'm ugly? Not I'm not saying, I'm just asking if that represents you well. If you think that represents you, you well. Do you think it represents me well? What do you think? So you're saying I'm ugly? No, I'm not. It seems like Patrick's saying I'm ugly. Here with Emma. Emma, what's your spirit animal? Oh, um, Probably a panda. Can you explain why? I eat a lot and then I just sleep. <laughs> All right, thank you. thank you. Here with uh, Grady and Caleb, guys. What's your spirit animal? Spirit animal, uh, definitely Mamoon. He's my spirit animal. Okay, okay can you further for, for, further? <laughs> Is that? Uh, he's feisty. He, he's what? Feisty. Feisty. Okay, Caleb. What about you? I have to go with the manatee because. Like, they just do their own thing, they don't bother anybody. They're kind of just in their own mind. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty chill, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm here with Miss Hammond once again. Uh, Miss Hammond, who's your spirit animal? I would have to say Mudang the hippo because I am also always filled with rage. What, what gives you rage? It's everything. But she's so cute and she just likes to bite her trainer's knee. She's just chilling and everyone loves her. And I think that's unique. So, so we're not gonna skip on the rage part. Like, what here gives you rage? I'm here with uh, Carter. Carter, uh, what's your spirit animal? Uh, a koala. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, cause they're slow, and like they just like relax all day, and like that's what I do. You're slow and you relax all day. Yeah, and they sleep, and I like sleeping. I'm here with. Um, I Senna. Isena, what is your spirit animal? Uh, it's probably flying fox. It's a bat. Like a bat in the pictures. Oh, like, oh no, like, like a bat. Like, that, like, bat yeah, that was like, like huge, like like two meters. Oh. That's how big it is. Yeah, it's, no, it's actually from like the, like from probably the door to like the bottom of that picture, like in Australia. Oh, of course it's from Australia. <laughs> but they eat, um, they eat food, so that's a good thing. Alright, well thank you. <laughs> thank you. Here with Savannah. Lucy. Guys, what's your spirit animal? Um, a flamingo, because they're pink. And because they're beautiful. Alright.